Well, time to finish off a little tour of the third Ed Chaos Champions, and time to look at the Zinch representative, Ammerman. Ammerman actually first came to being during second edition like Khan, so was around for a while unlike Lucius and Typhus. Still, looking at his lore, he was the chief librarian of the Thousand Sons under Magnus the Red. Like his Primarch, Ammerman had a thirst for knowledge, and was a powerful psycho lot of his legion, and studied every piece of lore and knowledge he could find. Now, during the heresy, the Thousand Sons got a bit done over, as Magnus tried to warn the Emperor about horrors, but did so in a way that broke a rule the Emperor had made, and he sent the Space Wolves to deal with them. This also further got treated by horrors to make it a lot more violent. The Thousand Sons proceeded to get their asses kicked and ended up joining Horus and the Chaos Gods Zinch to save themselves. There was one slight problem with this, causing a whole bunch of mutations in the Legion. But don't worry, here comes Ammon to save the day, casting the Rubik of Ammon, which turned all the Legion to dust and sealed their souls in the armour by the sorcerers. Ammon considered this successful, as it did technically stop the mutation, but Magnus was... not happy, and proceeded to kick him out of the Legion for it. Still, he continued with his new cabal to hunt down knowledge, mainly focused on getting to the Black Library of the Eldari, which he did finally get into after... numerous failed attempts, and now continues his quest for knowledge elsewhere. So yeah, he's got a bit of an ego, and what he considers a success is a bit... Mm, debatable. Anyway, how did he fare in his rules? Well, any Thousand Sons army could be led by him, and no other limits other than that. Once again, could come with a unit of Chosen, but being an independent character was not required. Still, points-wise, he was 215 points, and Revit Skill 5, Ballista Skill 5, Strength 4, Toughness 4, Runes 3, Initiative 5, Attacks 3, Leash 10, and had a 3 plus save. The most vanilla of the stat lines, but that's because he's not a fighter, he is a psyker. Now, equipment-wise, he was also a bit bare. He had frag and crack grenades, a bolt pistol with inferno bolts, which meant instead of a single shot, it used a small blast template, so potentially do more damage. He, of course, had the Mark of Zinch, which meant fearless yet again, but this is a big one. He automatically passed all psychic tests he had to make. Quite a useful thing for a psychic-heavy character. He also had the Talisman of Zinch, which made other Psychers have a lower leadership for their Psychic tests, which was useful against some armies, but a bit of a dud against ones that had none like Necrons and Tau. Now, there's then the fact he knows, not one, not two, but seven Psychic powers. Six he just knew, and a seventh he could learn for the minor Psychic Chaos power tables. The powers he knew, though, were... Bolt of Change, a 24 inch, strength 8, AP 2, assault 1 shot, go for vehicles and sniping a character by themselves. The Twisting Path, this made a unit take a pinning test if they were within 12 inches, and if successful, also granted the Chaos player 50 victory points if the mission used them, which was an added bonus but didn't come up a lot. Doom Bolt, 18 inch, strength 5, AP 4, assault 3 attack, good for dealing with melee infantry or bikes, or squads in general. Gift of Chaos. You chose a friendly Chaos Space Marine or enemy model within 2 inches and rolled a dice, and if it was a 6 or higher than their toughness, they became a Chaos Spawn. The Spawn had a decent stat, so it was sometimes worth it in turning a Chaos Space Marine into one, but it was merely used to try and remove a character. Then he had a Brind of Chaos, a Flamer attack which would do anything on 4 plus with no armor saves allowed. This was quite useful, even though it was short ranged. Finally, Mass Mutation. This had the potential to grant a friendly Chaos Marine unit a demon gift, unless you rolled a 1 on the table. Then every single model of the unit had to roll a d6, and if they rolled a 1, they would turn to a gibbering spawn and remove from play. Chaos Gods are fickle like that. Now that is quite the list, and normally he'd only be able to cast 1 a turn, but that's where his Black Staff of Ammon comes in. This allowed him to roll a dice after casting a Psychic Power, and on a 4+, plus, he could cast the same Psychic Power again, or a different one. Then, if he wanted to try again, he'd need to roll a 6+, plus, and any future attempts would also be 6+. pluses. This 
technically means he could go infinite. Though questions would be asked what luck you have to pull that off. And that is Alman. He was squishy as a lot of ways of protecting himself other than bodyguards, but he was very versatile with his powers and also casting them was a big bonus. And with that, we are done with the Campaigns of Chaos for now. Next week we go to the more secretive side of the Imperium of Man and look at the second-ed versions of the Assassin Temples. We'll see you then.